What's up everybody, my name is Kia and here is the Kimo. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know about the component. When do we need to make a component? How to create the component? What are the properties and variants of the component? And how to use the auto layout in order to actually create reusable elements that we can reuse everywhere in our design file. And at the end, I will show you how to nest the component within each other and nest the properties of the child component within the parent one. So get sure to watch this video until the end. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's make our very first user interface element and see how we can actually convert them to component. I'm gonna make one button at the very beginning. So I select my uh, text tool and write down button in my canvas. And then I apply the auto layout on it by using the combination key shift A. I rename the frame that we made to something more proper. And then I adjust the horizontal padding to 24 pixel, a vertical padding to 16 pixel. These are basically top and bottom and left and right margin that we can also adjust them by using this handle here, as you can see in our canvas. And at the end, I will add a background color to our bottom. Of course, we can add more complex styling to this button, but for now, I'm gonna keep it simple. So have in mind that we really need to use the auto layout in this step in order to create more dynamic resizing behavior for our company. And the reason is that we're gonna reuse this element in different places in our design file. And we, we are not sure that which kind of, uh, let's say, content we're gonna use in different places. So maybe sometime we use a text with the uh, more length and sometimes with the shorter length. So we need to be ready for all situations. And auto layout will provide us some feature to achieve this kind of goal. The features like the, the horizontal and vertical resizing behavior, as you can see here, when we select the bottom frame, which is the parent uh, layer of the text layer that we have. And then we can set the horizontal resizing behavior to hug, which means, or they hug the content, which means Basically, this parent element is going to follow uh, the horizontal resizing behavior of the content or, or the child uh, layer, in this case, the button text. So if I change the length of the text, you can see the frame is following uh, these changes as well. And this will help us to, pro to be ready for all the situations in the future. In case I change this uh, value to fixed width, you can see how it impacts the uh, sizing uh, changes in our bottom frame. Now that our element is ready, the only thing that left is to convert it to component. So I'm gonna select the uh, element that we made and click on this icon here on top or use the uh, combination key Control alt k As you can see, there are two indications that shows that this element has been converted to a component. Purple border, which is highlighting my a selected element and of course the other one is this icon next to the name of the frame I can get access to uh, the component list that I have in this file by clicking on the assets and opening the assets panel we can reuse this component by drag and drop it from the asset panel to our canvas or simply just make a copy from the component that we made and as you can see here I can change the text of the buttons easily individually this is not only the text, I can also change the style of each individual uh, copy version uh, as I wish. We call the copy version instance in the Figma and the other one that we made at the beginning, a main component. When I select the instance version, I can get access to the master or the main component from this uh, panel here. And if I click on the uh, this icon, it will navigate me automatically uh, to my master or main component. One of the very useful feature of the Figma regarding to the component is that we can create different custom properties with the custom values for a component. Let's give an example here. If I select the main component that I made, here I will see the properties panel basically. And if I click on the plus button here, I can create different type of property for this button. The very first type of the property is going to be the variant. When I click on the variant property, you can see actually the appearance of my main component has been changed because it's been converted to a set of component instead of individual component, which means now if I click on this plus button here, I will have a different variant 
of main component inside this component. So these are not separated component. Basically, these are the same component in different variants. And as you can see, all has the same property, but different values for the same property here. For example, let's change the property here as a background color. And then the first one, I will set background color to purple. And then second one, I would like to have a red background color. And the third one, I would like to have a green. But as you can see, it's just a property that we define. It has no impact on the style of the button. What I have to do as a last step is to kind of restyle or change the style of each variant to the way that I want. For example, in the scale, I define the property of the second button to the red. So background color red. So I select the second variant and I change the background color to red. And the third one, I decide to have a green background. So let's change the background color to green. So now if I select one of the instances that I made, I will have access to the property that I've made for the main component, which is the background color. And I can change the value of this uh, property for each instance individually. Of course, we can create different uh, properties type. The second one is the Boolean, which uh, basically the value can be true or false. For example, let's say um, icon. So I create this properties, but as you can see, this uh, property has been not used anywhere in this uh, component. I will use the feather icon in order to add one icon to my bottom. Let's just select one icon randomly and do I have to add this to all of them. So let's copy and paste it to all. Select all the icon layer. Let's close the feather icon plugin. And then from the visibility or the layer visibility properties, I click on this icon here, which is going to connect the visibility of this icon or this uh, element that I select to a property, to the value of a property that I kind of defined for the uh, master or the main component. Previously, I already made a property, so I connect this uh, let's say attribute to that property and as you can see it's indicate like this that okay they are now connected now if i select one of the instances and kind of toggle off the show the icon it will kind of make the icon invisible or hide the icon i would like to create another set of components click on the feather icon and open it and just add randomly maybe three to four icons Let's organize them a bit better to see all of them. Now, again, I select all of the icons and create multiple, uh, sorry, create a component scent from them. Let's change the also color to white at this stage. Now I would like to drag and drop one of the uh, icon pack instances in my uh, canvas. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another component from it. Let's get back to the icon pack and rename the properties that we have to type. Uh, we will have a property named type and we can change the icons uh, within this icon pack easily. That will help us to kind of reuse this icon later on in different component and be able to change the icon uh, easily without kind of doing extra copy paste and extra work. Now let's get back to our process. I converted this instance to another component. Let's add another properties. The type of the property would be the variant. I would use this property to define the size of the icon. The first one, the value would be 24 pixel. And the second one, I make another variant and I name it uh, maybe, I don't know, 32 pixel. Now, if I drag and drop this icon that we made, you can see that I can even change the size of the icon. But to change the icon itself, the icon type itself, I need to double click on it and go inside the uh, component and change the icon, which is not so bad. But let's see how we can kind of nest the properties of the child component within this component to the parent one. The only thing I have to do is just select the parent component and click on the plus button again here. And here you can see there is a section named 
expose properties from and I can click on the nested instances and here we can see the child component within the component that we already used there by clicking on this one we can see that the properties that we had for the child uh, component which is the icon pack is already accessible from the uh, parent component in this case this icon let's call it icon size so now if I make an instance from the icon size, I have the access to both uh, properties. One is the sizing, which belongs to the same component. And the other one belongs to the icon component or icon pack component, which is the child component of the current uh, component. So I can uh, do the both changes, change the icon type and also the size of them uh, directly from one component. Now I would like to use this component that we made which was the icon size within the uh, button that we made previously and now again i would like to nest the same properties of the icons inside the button as you can see if right now i uh, drag and drop one instance from the button here i do not have access to properties of the icons they are not here so let's do the same process. I select the parent component, which is the button. I click on the properties. And then from here section, expose properties from, I click on the nested from. And then here I can see already the direct child of this company, which is the icon size and the child of the child uh, component, which is the icon pack. So when I select on this, I will get access in this component as well to all properties belong to the icon size, which is the direct child and icon pack, which is going to be the kind of second child of the button. Now, when I select the instance of the button, you can see I have access already to all properties uh, from the child uh, component. The size is not working here because we have the fixed width kind of here. So the icon cannot change. Uh, but the type of the icon is changing easily that will help us to easily change the icon of the button uh, depending on our use in our design file so, so this is how we kind of nest the different component within each other and uh, their properties as well there are in general three main uh, scenarios in which it makes sense for us to make a component and the reason is that because we need to avoid creating tons of different component and make our design file crowded and kind of hard to use. The first situation that we really need to make a component is when we want to reuse one element more than once in different places, such as this button. As you can see here, I made three instances of the button. Let's, let's change the properties to the default version, which is the purple background color. If I want to change a style of uh, these buttons altogether, if I don't use the component, I have to go through all individually and change the, the style in a way that I want. For example, now the border radius. Right now we have this component and all the instances kind of inheriting the styling from the uh, parent or the main component. So the only thing I have to do if I want to change any styling in a whole design file, I need to just come here and find the parent component and change the style there. And as you can see, it will automatically apply and the others. The other scenario in which we really need to use the component is when we have different variant of the same element. In this case, for example, you see we define different variant for this uh, button. We can create different state like hover uh, and click uh, button variant. And at the end of the day, we can also use the prototyping tools in order to connect and define the transition behavior between different variant of the same component, which will help us to create micro interactions and animations later on for a single element. These are the three main scenarios in which it really makes sense to use a component. And I hope you learned something new in this video. If it was so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment, and see you in the next video. Let's learn together.